Hello, my name is Alexander Lorenza, and I'm a therapist in the Counseling Services Department at Johnson Wales University. Today, we are going to discuss cannabis use disorder. The learning objectives to this program are as follows. After completing this brief PowerPoint, participants should be able to differentiate between recreational cannabis use versus cannabis use disorder. They will receive an overview of legitimate medical marijuana uses versus marketing and misinformation and gain an understanding of the short and long-term outcomes of cannabis use. So let's start by looking at the difference between cannabis use versus cannabis addiction or cannabis use disorder. Here on the left, we see a picture of somebody smoking out of a small pipe, and we could say they're using the minimal dose necessary of cannabis to get the desired effects. Now, certainly we don't know anything about this person's behavior or their relationship to cannabis, but we could use this as an example of recreational cannabis use. So when I say recreational use, I think of somebody who smokes infrequently, once a month, once a year when they see their friends from high school, and they don't really have any functional impairments from their cannabis use. Certainly when they're using, they have the functional impairments of cannabis intoxication, but over time there are no negative impacts. Now this is no encouragement for anyone to use drugs as there's no healthy level at which drugs can be consumed, but we just wanna look at the difference between use and abuse and addiction. Now this person on the right is uh, totally different. We could say that they're using a massive amount of cannabis and their head is wreathed in pot leaves. Now again, we don't really know if this person has cannabis use disorder, but to me, it's all about the scale. And when I think of a substance use disorder, I think about the scale of the person's use. How frequently do they use it? How much do they use? And how long have they been using at this frequency? And what are the functional impairments that are caused by the substance use? So let's take a brief look at the forms cannabis comes in and the THC content of that cannabis. So first, the traditional marijuana flower. If someone is smoking this, you could expect the average THC content to be around 15%. The THC content is the percentage of THC in the plant, which is the psychoactive substance that causes the high and also causes the functional impairments over time. Edibles come in a variety of forms. They can be homemade or bought commercially, and it takes about two hours to feel the effects of edibles. So if you were to use, you have to be very careful of how much you consume, as if you consume too much, uh, it could lead to very, very high anxiety and agitation, and sometimes psychosis, which requires a hospitalization. Dabbing or vaping are really just means of using high THC content products. Dab carts are very common for vaping and they can have THC content of 90% and above. And when we think about THC content, you have to keep in mind that the higher the THC content, the more functional impairment that will happen and the more addictive the substance is going to be. Lastly, let's take a look at the FDA approved prescriptions that are made from marijuana products. There are only four of these drugs and they're used to treat very serious medical conditions, as you can see here. So now we're going to take a look at the uh, medical marijuana industry and some of the fiction that surrounds that. Here we see an infographic that is very common on the internet or in the recreational or medical marijuana industry. Uh, that shows different strains of marijuana and what the potential benefits could be for someone that uses them. Now, as we saw on the previous slide, 
there are really only a few FDA approved medications made from marijuana, and they're used to treat pretty serious medical conditions. The research that is out there on marijuana's medical usage does not show a lot of benefits for many of the diseases and syndromes that the marijuana industry says marijuana can treat. And here's an example of that. So on the right, what I'm showing you is the list of diseases and syndromes that you could be granted a medical marijuana card in Rhode Island for. So really, to get a medical marijuana card, all you have to do is have a doctor fill out some simple paperwork that attests that you either have one of these diagnoses or have symptoms that could indicate one of these diagnoses, and the state will grant you a card. It's a cash transaction, and once you're given the card, you can just go to a dispensary and buy whatever you want. Uh, and the dispensary carries all of the products that we saw a couple slides ago, um, which many have very high THC content uh, that have absolutely no medical purpose um, aside from getting someone high. Certainly any of those could help if you have pain, uh, but that's not necessarily a therapy for pain. It's just a pain management strategy that's short term and works because of the sedating effects of marijuana. None of this is a long-term therapy that can actually help someone's condition improve. So with all of that misinformation out there and really the normalization of heavy cannabis use, I see much more cannabis use disorder as a therapist than I did uh, when I first started working in the field. And here are some of the long-term impacts of heavy cannabis use that have been shown in research. And again, I wanna make clear that these impacts come from heavy, sustained cannabis use over a period of time. This is not the person that smokes once in a while. These are for folks that smoke every day, multiple times every day, and have done so for a long period of time. So again, any of these impacts is going to be detrimental to somebody's functioning. And what I typically see are, are the cognitive impacts and the life impacts that happen uh, when someone's used cannabis for a long period of time in terms of their ability to learn, their judgment, their motivational levels, what they've achieved in their life versus what they thought they would, and how heavy cannabis use really amplifies mental health symptoms that someone may already have, or it brings out ones that weren't there, but they had some genetic risks for those to become real in their life. So this is a big reason why I talk about uh, medical marijuana, because there is so much misinformation out there about how marijuana can be used to treat anxiety and depression, when in practice and in observation, I've only seen heavy cannabis use make those disorders a lot worse. And lastly, I had to add in this meme because sometimes I see this exact face when I first start talking to someone about their cannabis use. But I find that when you take a softer approach and you really just help someone think critically about what they're putting into their body, that they start to consider what the effects actually have been and they might actually make a change. So just as a reminder, if anyone needs any assistance for whatever reason, you, your roommate, your friend, feel free to call counseling services. Here's all our information and we'd be happy to help. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you soon.